So just a quick reminder, if black women and black men don't come together and create black kids, uh, black women don't exist. Black women don't exist because in order for a black woman to be in existence, she needs a black man and a black woman to come together and create a black baby girl who grows into becoming a woman. Now, why is that important? Because if you are a black woman who supposedly loves and believes in the existence and value and beauty of black femininity, you have to remember how they get here. And black women get here through men and women procreating. So to consistently undermine men is to undermine your very existence because your existence depends upon a man. It, there's no way around it. A man and a woman have to come together to create a black child, a black woman, black women. Now I came across this tweet that really, I think helps reiterate the importance of understanding how and why your relationship with the men in your community is directly connected with your overall lifestyle and your long-term goals. This tweet, right, or post <laughs> on X went viral and it reads, had a mother get mad because I don't write her son a college recommendation letter. I only do so for black girls. They face more roadblocks than black males and we have to show them how sisterhood works. You know, part of me wants to believe this is just like a CIA op. <laughs> like I really want to believe this is just a troll who has been hired to bring chaos and cause division. Like, But there's also a part of me that knows that there's been enough people um, who have had this experience, enough black men in particular who have had this experience of not necessarily getting the support from women in their own institution and vice versa. And, 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 and um, it is disappointing. You had that one incident with Ice Cube that really caused people's eyes to open. And there's been just over the years, there has been different actions that women have made to really separate themselves. You know, say her name, somebody why I'm not marching for Eric Garner. There's been this push by, you know, certain black feminists in particular to really try to create a separate space distinctive from black men because, you know, their argument is that they don't get enough attention. This goes back to the idea of black male privilege and why black women need to have a separate space that is just for them. What evidence do we have that black women face more roadblocks than black men when it comes to institutional support? Because last I heard, I mean, there are more black women who are enrolled <laughs> than black men. Um, there are certainly more black women in like t as teachers and positions of power as far as teachers and professors. They are overwhelmingly women and not men. I'm just <laughs> quite curious what roadblocks that these black women are facing that black men themselves aren't facing, if not more. Be black men, the presence of black men, just especially tall, dark, you know, particular build, um, their very presence elic elicits the feeling of a threat, not, just, not necessarily black women. So this is why I'm like, what evidence? Is this just an idea? If anybody knows, please let me know. When your success as a black woman or your success as a woman has to come at the expense of the men in your community. That is where the problem to me really, really, really takes a big turn. Because at the end of the day, whether or not you agree or disagree, in order for a community to survive and thrive, men and women have to be working together. They have to be working well enough to be able to procreate. I think what black women also don't understand is that when they go out of their way to undermine the success of men in their own community and, and put black women in positions of power and keep black men from, or gatekeep black men out, they're also feeding into their relationship problems. Because these, many of these same women who do make it to positions of authority, leadership, or have, uh, you know, career success, at least in the corporate world, or at least in, you know, the general mainstream society, these are the same women who are going in, who are complaining about there not being enough college educated black men, who are complaining about there not being black men, quote unquote, on their level, AKA in the same class, AKA white collar. These are the same black women who are complaining about not finding men that have the equal amount of degrees. So it's like, if you are gatekeeping men out of these positions by doing things like this, you cannot be surprised when these men are there, <laughs> when you get to whatever position you're at because there are different things done, not only by the system itself, but by you or people like you who had the ability to help to keep these men down. So that's why I'm like, y'all don't understand how 
this stuff, like, this stuff is hurting you. You just, you just sat down there and hurt your own relationship success. And then another thing, like if you go out of your way to gatekeep men out of positions that would improve them and ultimately the overall well-being of the society, if you go out of your way to do that and basically give men the message that you don't really care about them or you're not on their side, uh, you also can't be surprised when you feel like you're not protected by them because these are the kind of actions that either show that give the message, whether it's implicit or explicit, that you're my enemy. We're not on the same team. We are competing. So you can't expect a person you're competing with to protect you. So, th so this is what I'm saying, like this mindset really does a number, not only on black men, but ultimately black women in the overall community. The Asian community does not work like this. The white community certainly doesn't work like this. Okay, the Jewish community doesn't work like this. Something I've noticed consistently, cause like, you know, in the Bay Area, it's very diverse. Right? If I'm in an Asian incubator, right? Where there's a ton of Asian stores, right? There's plenty in the Bay Area. I'm gonna go into a restaurant. I'm gonna go into a dentist's office. I'm going to go into a, I don't know, a dry cleaning. I'm gonna go into a nail shop. 100% of the workers are Asian. Asian women and Asian men, 100%. 100%. I'm not saying they don't have their own issues. I'm sure they do, but at the end of the day, these people opening their own businesses, these people creating their own institutions, they're hiring their own people. Corporate world, these large, these larger systems weren't created for black people in mind. They were created for white folks. And so a lot of times you got black, you have minorities going in these systems, vying, they're competing and they're, they're competing against one another in these white institutions trying to get to the top. One way to avoid that is create your own institutions, create your own schools, <laughs> create your own businesses, which is what other communities actually do. Other communities, they have maybe a school that they go to and then they have their own school. They go and teach their own history and they hire their own teachers that they fund. Uh, other communities go and they, like I said, build their own restaurants. They have their own stores, maybe their own clothing stores. They share their own jewelry. They have... They do that and they employ their own. Now getting into questions of larger community building. And the reality is there's a lot of women who don't really care. They just, they are, they'd much rather assimilate and try to figure out how to work in a quote unquote white system where they feel oppressed. They try to, they'd rather find a comfortable place in a current white system. And if that means throwing their men under the bus, if that means competing with their men, they're okay with that. They'd rather do that then actually find a way to try to build with the, the men where there can be unity. That really goes back to the overall goal of the individual person, right? Whether or not their goal is just to assimilate and kind of just work with what they have in the system, or if they actually are about trying to build the, the community on their own and do things outside of the system and create a system that works for them. That goes on to the individual person. So whatever your philosophy is, just know that your decision actually matters and every decision you make as a black woman, especially if you find yourself in the position of power, can be done for the betterment of the overall community or the eventual demise of the overall black community. And if you think as a black woman that you can improve the life of black women by undermining black men, you have another thing coming. Because even if you maybe are not directly impacted, best believe you're impacted another way. Whether it is you feeling like you're not protected because there's not men around to protect you because you have basically said that they're your enemy. Whether it is where are these men, they're not on my level because you have you or people like you have specifically gate kept them out of positions where they could have authority and money and resources. Um, and this is also why you have some men out there who actually say that black women are the handmaidens of white supremacists because they're like, these, some of these women are treating us no differently than what a racist person would do who wants to keep us out of the resources. Every choice that you make does have an impact and a healthy community, 
a healthy mindset understands that to value the life of men and women is going to be the best choice for the overall community long term. But in my opinion, someone who lacks understanding and doesn't understand how this works in the long run is going to ultimately dig their own grave while thinking that they're doing themselves a favor. And nothing is more clear to me than this one scripture that really sums this up. The wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears hers down. And this is exactly what happens when black women go out of their way to undermine the success at black men who they depend upon. On. But anyways, those are my thoughts. What do you think? Do you agree or disagree? Let me know. Leave your questions, comments, concerns in the comment section below. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe um, if you liked this video. Also, guys, be sure to check me out on Substack where I just well, I will be releasing exclusive articles there. Um, check me out there. And thank you guys. We'll talk later. Okay. Bye.